Okay, here we are with the 334 Project Holders Boulder. And what I'm getting ready to do right now, we just got the block back from tumbling, which is where it's uh, put in a, with a big rubber belt into a machine. It's tumbled with steel shot that beats all of the uh, casting, any kind of rust or anything, and pulls it down to bare metal. Anybody going to build a really professional engine assembly, this is your starting point. Now know this, when you tumble these blocks, they have to be line honed, all the surfaces have to be board, machine, decked, um, all the bolt holes which we'll go through have to be drilled, threaded, blowed out because that steel shot can find its way into anything. So before you have a block tumbled, you must know that every machine process has to be done to the block. Now that being said, one of the things that I do with my fresh beaded block is I begin with the Magnaflux. Now, I'm going to Magnaflux inside the cradle area, the webbing, the mains, roll it over. I'm going to hit the cylinder bores and try to see if there's any cracks. Now, I have a very special block here. Uh, I've had it, I've kept it for about 13, 12 years since I did my first 334, I believe back in 2000 or 01. And I run across this block. This is the 1977 block, I believe is what it is, with the dipstick on the driver's side. It was listed as a HD block, I do believe, which meant it would have been heavy duty truck. So it was probably in a, in a quarter ton Chevrolet pickup truck, maybe even some half tons. And the difference is with the, these blocks, they had a little higher nickel content in them. This was such a prized block with a standard bore that I kept this for years and my friend Troy Holder managed to pull it out of me because the other block I had had been bored 30 over and another machinist had done some work to it, which this guy's a crackpot here in Springfield. So. Anyway, we're starting with a fresh core from the ground up. Now, let me show you how I begin my magnafluxing process and what to look for. And you got to have magnafluxer and a bunch of good powder because you're going to dust this thing all over from one end to the other because we're going to spend a lot of money on machining, close to $1,000, about $2,800 worth of internal parts, and then all the work I'm going to do. This is the real beginning of the block on Project Holder Boulder. I might add that the reason we got that name is it's on a boat and there was a time a while back where uh, he was with me and on a four-wheel drive thing and you know one of the things a four-wheel drive guys would do they'd hook chains to stuff and pull it and say well my truck it'll pull a boulder down and Troy used to say that sometimes and that was a long time ago and uh, so I just named this Holder's Boulder because it is a stump puller and it will throw the rooster tails and yank them skiers right out of the water and still get 20 miles to a gallon or more. So anyway, let's begin the Magnaflux process and see what we got. Okay, I get my little light. It's got me a little fluorescent light. And no big deal, but it'll do the job. Just something to get a little closer. And I just take my powder and just begin shooting it in there. Now with a magnafluxer like the one I got, you're going to have to cross mag it several times to keep the charge. So basically I just go around the block. Sometimes you blow on it a little bit to get any powder out. And I just pretty much go a full circle all the way around until I know that I got it Magnaflux to my satisfaction. Okay, now I'm going to continue on and go ahead and Magnaflux all of the cradles in here and then we'll turn around and show the other part. But what I wanted to show, you want to mag in this area right in here on the sides and the top to make sure there's no cracks right where a water jacket area might be and also down in the lifter galley area. Now sometimes I can try as good as I can to get this down in there like right now. Okay, now it seems like you can barely see it. However, you can still go in there and shoot it 
and it will get real close to the bottom of the bores. I mean, I can see it plain as day, okay? And then I just kind of move it over. You know, it ain't perfect, but believe me, it does a good job. And you can see, because this yellow powder, it really flares up down in there and shows you. Let me see if I can get you a look. Just see by the porkle pine sprinkles. You can tell it's got a good charge, but these are the areas right here. See, look right here. You see that area right there? All right, right there's where you're looking at. Anywhere in there, the crevices, the back of the bore. Good buddy, if it's got a crack, it'll sure pull it up and show it to you. Okay, now I'm gonna pull back and go ahead and click my nozzle, turn the power off, set it up here, and begin the next one. We'll go on down the web and then the outside of the block and the lifter gallery. Area to pay attention to, very important, which is about one of the most important areas I left out, is your webbing underneath here. You start from this side and go around because that's what holds your crankshaft in. When you charge it with that, it really gives you a good view and lets you see all the webbing come off the sides. You want to make sure there ain't no kind of microscopic fractures or anything else. Okay? The okay, next area I hit is on the outside of the block. Typically, this is where people left it, uh, didn't have the correct antifreeze in it. And in the winter time, even though you got uh, frost plugs right here, it'll still crack the cylinder bore if they ain't got the right amount of antifreeze. And I cannot tell you over the years how many of these that this has happened to. Now this is a thing that a lot of machine shops will skip because they don't want to take the time and sit there and magna flux it. And I can't tell you how many places I've worked at that uh, I sit there and watch them do all this machine work and there'll be a crack inside that block area. It is nothing but stupidity not to take a minute and magna flux the block all the way over and make sure that you ain't got no cracks or nothing that can cause a problem. I mean, it's not exactly the easiest thing, but you know what? You're working on a motor and doing a build-up like that. It is the builder's job to do this. Uh, I've got a great machinist, but I went ahead because I wanted to see this myself before he done any of the work to it. I'm Magnaflox in the block, a block because I'm the engine builder, okay? As an engine builder and verifier, it is my job to check the block not just to take the machinist's word for it, kind of like a third party thing where you're one person's doing the machining, one person's doing the assembling, one guy's doing quality control. That's how you put together a good short block. All right, so you've seen where I magna flux the sides. Now let's get a look at the top of the block. This is, to me, the second most important part of the test. The first is the main webbing and in that area, the second is the cylinder bore. Now when you're magna fluxing the cylinder bore, of course you got your light. And you go in here and you shoot the powder in the bore. And you're going to do it two different ways. Charge it this way, turn it, and charge it that way. That way you've got the pulse going through the block really good. And see, this is why shop painting the block is so important. Because man, like I said, it strips this thing down to almost nothing. Except you get a little bit of gaskets on the end because of the way it's tumbling the block. But as far as the cylinder bores, it's quite un unbeatable. And then you know that you got a good piece ready to go. Okay, I'll do this to all the cylinders and get through with it. Then I'll hit the valley area next. Okay, just one more shot in the bore. I want to give you one more glance at it there. Excuse my old big stupid feet. All right, as you can see, boy, if there's a crack, this stuff would just float right to it. Not a problem. Now let's hope we get this seven more times and while I'm at it I hit the deck a little bit. Just kind of take your time. You're not in no hurry. Make sure you get a good view. Okay, now for the final part. The cylinder bores all past mag. We magged it from the bottom. Magged it from the top. 
mag the deck, got all the sides, we're down to the last part, which is right here in the lifter galley area. I've, I've never seen them too much have a problem in here, but just for shits and giggles, as they say, I go ahead and shoot a little bit because I sure don't want to find anything in this area. And the way as they say, expect the unexpected. So the area I'm hitting is a galley and up here on the sides. Now I have seen them bust up here. Cracks up in here from where the water expanded. So it isn't totally in vain. So anyway, that right there will be the final area I hit. And this is going to conclude magnafluxing of the Project Holder Boulder 334 block. She passed magnaflux, cylinder bores are good, and a standard bore in this 1977 heavy duty truck block that has passenger side dipstick.